The California court ruling overturning the state ban on same-sex marriage is giving same-sex marriage supporters new hope tonight. In Baltimore, a national conference is being held to push for a nationwide expansion of marriage rights. Both sides of this debate appear ready for a fight here in Maryland. Well, we really have, you know, a large number of folks throughout the state standing with us, um, loud voices committed to helping us in the long haul push full marriage equality through. There have been bills introduced in the Maryland legislature um, every session uh, to legalize same-sex marriage, legalize civil unions, to do a variety of things, and, and none of them have uh, gone even through committee, let alone uh, past the legislature. Next month, the same-sex bill will be introduced in Annapolis for the third time by lawmakers from Montgomery and Prince George's County. So what's next for the California case? Well, the judge issued a stay preventing couples from getting married right now, but it expires tomorrow. The judge will hold another hearing tomorrow to determine if he will extend that stay. The losing side then will likely file an appeal, which is expected to end up in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. Joining me now to talk about the I Do debate, Bishop Harry Jackson, pastor of Hope Christian Church and chairman of the Stand for Marriage DC Coalition, and also Mr. Elbridge James, director of the Maryland Black Family Alliance and first vice president of the Montgomery County branch of the NAACP. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us tonight. Bishop Jackson, I'm going to start with you. You've been very sure. vocal in this fight against gay marriage here in the district. The judge says this ruling was more about civil rights and more about human equality uh, than it was about being gay. Knowing your own family's struggles uh, with civil rights in the Jim Crow South, can you understand today's ruling? Really, I cannot. I think that they are riding on the coattails of the real civil rights movement. My father was threatened at gunpoint, uh, threatened about voters' rights. The penultimate right of every voter uh, or citizen is to vote. And so the judge basically said, I don't care what you think, California, what I've decided goes, and he's abridged the civil rights of a large group of people. And it's really uh, a matter of a minority oppressing the majority. But don't you think that um, the people on this side, the, the, <clears throat> on the, the side of gay rights, that they are due civil rights as well? They're due civil rights as individuals. Marriage is a privilege. Every society determines on what grounds they allow marriage to occur and how it promotes the betterment of all the culture. And I believe that this really does not work for the advancement, if you would, of America or California. And that's where the debate comes in. Mr. James, let's bring you in right now. Your organization supports gay marriage. Now, this ruling for some has been called a landmark decision. Some even call it the, this generation's Brown versus the Board of Education, which is, of course, the ruling that outlawed segregation in schools. Do you think this is a fair comparison? I would say this goes toward the Loving case, to which interracial marriage was banned throughout many states in the United States. And because the Supreme Court stepped in, they, in fact, ruled that marriage between that time a man and a woman loving couples uh, should, should continue. This is an important decision, though. I mean, Sharon Lettman of the National Black Justice Coalition uh, stated the fact is that correctly that the, the plaintiff showed that it was discriminatory. Uh, this oh, affected the lives of every person in that state. Uh, it, it affected families in that state. And so we, we believe the judge's decision was correct. You need to have well, equal protection and equal rights under the law. This is not a church no, issue. This is, this is an loving, issue where... Uh, let me finish. Let me example, finish. Though. Let me finish. This is a church issue. This is not you a church issue. Time. This is an issue where the state and the federal government and the state gives people rights and protections. Well, which you deny. Well, why can't the people vote? The Loving case is a spurious analogy because you're changing the very fundamental definition of marriage. Two men, two women is not a marriage. The Loving case was just a black man or a white woman or a black lady and a white man. So it's fundamentally different. You're changing an institution. You're potentially hurting and redefining a family. Uh, the, the issue is don't kids deserve to have a mom and a dad, not just a dad. And Mr. Currently, Mr. Jackson, currently me, today. Excuse me, gentlemen. Mr. Jackson, let me jump in. You, you brought this up and you said, don't they deserve to have a mom and a dad and not just a mom and a mom or a dad and a dad? Yeah. Don't you think having good parents is better than, you know, a child just being left, say, in, a, in, a, in an institution? Well, in theory, that's a great point. We we're committing, really, to our future a great social experiment. Nobody knows long term how two gay men are going to raise kids. And so what we've got is a manipulation of data. Oh, contrary, go ahead. Oh, I, 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 I beg to differ. This right. year in Annapolis, 
when I was leg when I was lobbying for the NAACP and other groups, we had a young gentleman come up when when he found out that I was for protection of equal rights for same-sex couples. He shared with me the fact is that he has had two mothers. He yep. and his fiance have moved to Washington D.C. where they're getting married and going to how, raise a how family. How old are they? The issue is you don't they're have in their 20s. generations. He's of in proof. his 20s, sir. Oh come He's on, 5,000 years of a tradition, and you're going to change it at the snap of a of a finger. Marriage is on life support in general in America. You ought to know that. It's uh, really uh, illogical. Bishop Jackson, we had 5,000 years of slavery. Are you going to tell me that longevity determines the rights? There's slavery going on right now. Is Mr. it right? Mr. James, is let me jump right? in quickly and let me ask you a, a quick question here. Do you think today's ruling um, essentially takes away the rights of voters? I mean, there were 7 million people in California who voted for Proposition 8, and this judge's decision sort of wipes that all away, or at least that's what they feel it does. Do you think this um, says something about taking away if, the rights you, of voters? If, if you know anything about African-American history, we did not have voters across this country give African Americans our rights to vote. No one in Alabama gave people in Alabama the right to vote. It was, in fact, the courts through it, the NAACP and other organizations that fought for our civil rights. That's not totally true. Uh, what you have is Charles Hamilton Houston, the dean of Howard Law School, dealing with Thurgood Marshall. They incrementally did change things in the court. But ultimately, after long dialogue, America has embraced African-American rights. What we're saying, there ought to be the, the same courts. process it started for in marriage. The courts. And you do not have, no, no, not alone. No, across this country, you do not have the right of a majority to oppress a minority. That is a bad precedence that you set. Oh, I agree it's a bad precedence. Read the book, Rudin Branch, Ron James Jr. talks about Howard law school, Thurgood Marshall, and you'll understand there was ultimately a dialogue started in the 30s, worked two ways to the 50s, that whole process of getting blacks rights to vote, participate in life. My father was threatened at gunpoint for voter rights uh, opportunities, and I believe that you're truncating the rights of all Americans by letting this be manipulated. Let me by jump in court. here. Let me jump in here, gentlemen. We just have a few seconds left. Mr. James, let me give you the final word here. How do you think ultimately this is going to impact our country? Ultimately, when I go home at night and kiss my wife, I can say we have a freer country. We will have a country where everyone has equal rights and equal protection under the law. That's how it's going to affect us. Bishop Harry Jackson, Mr. Elbridge James, thank you so much for coming in. We can clearly see this debate will continue on. Thank you for uh, sharing both sides of uh, this debate with us tonight. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you.